In this video, we're going to be talking a little bit more about evaporators because this is such an important subject. Um, remember, evaporators are one of the major components of your refrigeration system, so it's really important we have an understanding of the temperatures, the uh, operation, and everything having to do with evaporators. So, an evaporator's function basically is to absorb heat from the space. Okay, what we do is we, pu we pull warm air through an evaporator, warm air enters the coil, the aluminum fins are wrapped around tubes to increase the heat transfer area. The refrigerator inside the tubing absorbs the heat and cool air leaves the coil because cool air is just a lack of heat. So the evaporator temperature is the temperature of the refrigerant that's inside the refrigeration tubing. Inside the tubing. How do you measure evaporator temperature? Determine the suction pressure. Refer to your pressure temperature chart for that refrigerant. Choose the temperature of the refrigerant at that suction pressure. Okay, so it's a med it's basically a conversion. You're changing your suction pressure, which is your low side pressure, to temperature using the appropriate chart. Now, temperature difference versus delta T is pretty important in an evaporator. The temperature difference is the air temperature entering the evaporator minus the refrigerant temperature inside the evaporator. Okay, so temperature difference is a difference between the air temperature coming into the evaporator and the refrigerant temperature inside the evaporator. Delta T is the difference between the air entering the evaporator and the air leaving the evaporator. Don't get the two confused because technical support and technical documents will sometimes list both of these. Okay, delta T is most often used in air conditioning. Temperature difference is most used in commercial refrigeration. So we have a typical AC evaporator. Okay, the air coming into the evaporator is 75 degrees. My refrigerant or my boiling point from my pressures is 40 degrees. My temperature difference is 35 degrees. The air leaving has been cooled from 75 degrees to 55 degrees. My delta T is 20 degrees. So as you can see, if you get these two confused, these the temperature difference versus the delta T, and if the technical documentation is telling you one thing and you have another thing, you could end up in some real issues. Our humidity is 50%. Okay, so again, one of the things our evaporator has to do is to remove humidity. So originally, evaporators were just pipes with fins, gravity coils or convection coils. Fans increase this heat transfer, okay? Heat is absorbed during the boiling process of refrigerant, and that's latent heat. Then we increased surface area by and capacity by folding the coils over, using multi-circuit coils, and we made the coils longer and had more surface area without increasing pressure drop. Okay, now this is a gravity or convection coil. You have tubes with fins, you have drain pans under them. Why do we need the drain pans? Because the air will actually, the humidity will start accumulating on the tubes and have to drip someplace, okay? And those drain pans have to be kept clean and they have to take the moisture out or there's going to be a puddle on the floor, sometimes ice. Okay, the fan coil unit. Okay, fans increase the heat transfer. And this is the most common evaporator construction, copper tubing with aluminum fins. Okay, it's a block almost and the fan blows air across of it. And you have your where the black caps are here on the tubing. That's where the connections are made in, for my suction line and my um, liquid line. It's a single circuit evaporator. Okay, this is a multi circuit evaporator. Notice the distributor here. Okay, you come in out of your metering device. The refrigerant vapor or the flash gas gets distributed out. And then you also have a um, then you also have a manifold that takes it back to the suction line of the compressor. Okay, your TV is there, distributor tube to each circuit, and circulator outlets enter a suction header that come back to the suction line. 
Okay, a stamped or plate type evaporator, again, using distributor, notice it's plates. It's not, it's not fins and tubes. It's plates and it's stamped and it, the two sections are put together. Okay, they're used in ice machines and to cool liquids. Okay, to understand the te evaporator temperature difference, we have to know the type of refrigeration, so air conditioning, space temperature 75 degrees, evaporator temperature is 40 degrees, so my evaporator temperature is 35 degrees. Okay, reach-in refrigeration, we have a space temperature of 40, evaporator temperature of 20, evaporator temperature difference of 20 degrees. Reach-in freezer, zero degree space temperature. Evaporator temperature is negative 20 degrees, so my evaporator temperature is 20 degrees. This is because the space temperature is what's being pulled through the evaporator. Okay, it's the air entering the evaporator versus the evaporator temperature. Okay, walk-in refrigerator, 35 degrees. Evaporator temperature, 25 degrees. Evaporator temperature difference, 10 degrees. Walk-in freezer, space temperature, negative 10. Evaporator temperature, negative 20. Evaporator temperature, 10 degrees. So this is an air handler with an evaporator coil like you would find in, the, in, the, in an air conditioning system, not in refrigeration. Okay, we have our fan, we have our coil, we have our return air coming in of 75 degrees, we have a 40 degree refrigerant temperature. So for air conditioning units, my temperature difference is most often 35 degrees. We don't want our coil under freezing. Reach in and a walk in. Okay, reach in evaporator, temperature difference of 20 degrees. Walk in evaporator, temperature difference of 10 degrees. These are numbers that are the standards, okay? So you really should know these. Low velocity, high humidity evaporator coil, temperature different, 8 degrees. So refrigerated evaporators dehumidify. They remove moisture from the refrigerated space. So what's affecting our humidity? Evaporator temperature difference. The lower the temperature difference, the less moisture removed. So humidity is a measurement of the amount of moisture in the air based on its temperature. Okay, so different types of systems need to have different types of space humidity. Okay, and that's what this chart is going to show you. So air conditioning, okay, coil temperature difference, 35 degrees, humidity, 50%. Reach in, coil temperature, 20 degrees, humidity, 65%. Walk-in, coil temperature 10 degrees, humidity 85%. Okay, so for medium temperature walk-in refrigerator, we have a relatively high humidity of 85%. Okay, for medium temp reach-in refrigerator, I have a lower humidity, okay, of 65%. For air conditioning, which is considered a high temp air refrigeration system, we have a 50% humidity. Notice the difference based on the temperature difference. Okay, so the top left has a temperature difference of 10 degrees. I have a pretty high humidity. The next one, the medium reach in refrigerator, has a temperature difference of 20 degrees, slightly lower humidity coming out of that coil. The bottom one, which is air conditioning, has a temperature difference of 35 degrees. We have a very high hu or lower humidity of 50%. Why do we want a low humidity of 50%? Because mold and mildew will start growing on sheetrock and everything else if I had maintained an 85% humidity. Too much heat load boils the refrigerant away very quickly. Refrigerant molecules move faster. Okay, and it results in higher pressure and temperature. Too little heat load decreases refrigerant boiling. Refrigerant molecules move slower. Pressure and temperatures drop. Okay, so superheat, as I said, is the difference between the suction line temperature and the evaporator. Superheat too high is starving an evaporator. Superheat too low is flooding an evaporator. Okay, so we want to take our coil temperatures... 
okay, as close as we can get to that liquid line. Okay, so again, pressures of 49 is 25 degrees. Okay, liquid line, temperature is 35, so 35 minus 25 is 10 degrees superheat. Okay, when space temperature is above normal, there's a heavy load on the evaporator. That's considered a hot pull down. Okay, for accurate superheat calculations, the space temperature must be within 5 degrees of design conditions. Evaporator troubleshooting basically comes down to three main problems. Airflow, refrigerant, and load. Airflow, dirty filter, dirty or iced evaporator, blower ductwork problems. Refrigerant, metering device issues. Refrigerant charge, load, too high, too low. Okay, medium temperature refrigerators will frost. If space temperatures between 36 and 40 and evaporator temperatures are 15 to 25, coil frosting is normal. Coil will defrost during its off cycle because we still pull air across that coil and that air is above freezing. Medium temperature refrigerators use a thermostat off cycle to melt frost accumulation. Sometimes the time clock is needed to extend the length of the off cycle. Okay, so basic wiring of a 115 volt evaporator on a walk-in refrigerator. Okay, we use a pump down solenoid, okay, to shut off the flow of refrigerant to the evaporator. Okay, we have our evaporator coil. Okay, the common time clock is used for cycling outdoor lights, heaters, etc. Okay, the clock in our example has one set of normally closed contacts. It is a refrigeration, it cycles the refrigeration compressor for extended off cycle. Okay, the time clocks are used in refrigeration for planned off cycle defrost. It gives the evaporator extra time to air defrost. The clock shuts off the compressor while the evaporator fan continues to run. Okay, fan switch wiring. Some customers want to shut off the fan. Switch may serve as a service disconnect. Fan switch must also turn off the refrigeration. If not, your evaporator freezes and floods the compressor. Okay, this is just a wiring diagram of our fan switch. Wide spacing of fins slows frost buildup. Medium temperature evaporators have about 10 fins per inch. Low temperature evaporators have 7 fins per inch or less. So the lower the temperature, the wider the fin spacing. Okay, and you can measure the evaporator fin spacing to make sure the correct evaporator is being used in the system. So again, we really have to understand what the evaporators are. You have to know about superheat and you have to totally understand how the superheat works in a system and how you can use it to troubleshoot systems.